Within a day's driving distance of Cuenca, Ecuador, are a number of tiny mountain villages that specialize in making artisan products. Among them is San Bartolome, home to Mr. Uyaguari, who hand makes guitars that are world famous. So they don't use the nails, no, to make the structure of the guitar. They only this, see, glue. You know, and after they stick them together, everything, no. Uh, for example, this is Canadian pine, see, and this is local wood called kapuli. Sounds Chinese, but it's a local wood called kapuli, and this is called ebano, ebano from Brazil. See, so he import that and he gets the best acoustic, actually. But the, what makes really important, and especially the guitars of Mr. Uyaguari, is this decoration. Most of the guitars, this is plastic. Not here. This is a, this is a circle, and it's carved, and he filled with this decoration, this circle here, and every guitar has a special design. So with this playing from a piece of wood, and you get this, no? Mm -hmm. See? And they dye them from the, with different colors. See? They dye them and they start sticking them together. See? Like this. Or like this. You see? And you mix all the colors. See? You have this. And after that, you have something like this. See? See? For favor, Mr. Yaguari. Ya no veo. Hágales una figurita ahí. Hágales una figurita. Así va a ser. Of course, doing that, you get all these designs and different mm -hmm. decorations, mm -hmm. see? And with this, he is going to mix everything and he's going to combine them here. See? Mm -hmm. Unique in Ecuador and he exports to US, to Japan, to Europe as well. Look at that. Mixing. Our second stop was in Tortoleg, where we saw the world's largest silver earring and visited the shop of a silversmith who specializes in making filigree jewelry. Silver ingots are fed through a rolling mill where they become progressively thinner until small enough to be hand rolled into the finest uh, thread. They invented that uh, little uh, instrument, see, with cuckoo clock parts, see? Look at that, look at that. It, it gets in flat and, and it comes out, look at that, zigzag. When the wire is fine enough, it's worked into intricate designs, earrings, necklaces, dusted with silver powder, and soldered to hold it all together. The result is beautiful jewelry for an incredibly low price. Also in Tortoleg, we visited Mr. Fernando, famous for making miniature ceramic folkloric figurines. Voy a hacer una pieza como esta. Sí, una chola, ¿no? Sí, una chola. Va a hacer una chola la señora. Una chola, típica woman of Cuenca. Las piernas. Te sientas dos acá, pone la ropa. No, dos mismos sientes. Yeah. Piernas. Piernas. See, legs. This. The clay comes from the jungle, the clay, you know? Comes from the jungle. This special clay that when you cook it, yeah? It does not crack. See? Ahora. La carita. This is very interesting because, you know, they used to make only 20 pieces per day, see? They had to make all the details of the faces very, very, very good. 
and it used to take a lot of time to do that. And that's why Mr. Fernando, he invented molds. And that makes things really easier. But now she's gonna design a face with her hands and then with the mold, and you will see the difference. And now with the mold, they make 100 per day. Says it, she says it takes a long time to do mm -hmm. by hand. One of us tried our hand at making a mold face. It wasn't quite as easy as it looked. And in the end, we compared them side by side. Handmade on the left, mold made on the right. Fortunately, Mr. Fernando's uh, kids, they are learning the family business. See? ¿Sí? Yo creo que el borracho mismo de ser. Sí, le gusta sí. eso, me eso Yo sí. creo que el borracho mismo. ¿Le llaman antes? <risa> yeah. Pues claro. Pero ahora el sombrerito. Ya. Yeah. Ahí. O luego sentar. Está sí, igual. Se, se le puede cuelga. hacer sentar. Se le una. Mm. Cámbiale la forma. Así le he dicho que está con agua. Ahorita se le abrazar algo. Ya, cámbiale la. Así el niñito, así como se hace así. Se le abrazar. And the final product? These adorable figurines that depict the everyday life of the indigenous Ecuadorian. Our final stop for the day was in the village of Gualaseo, home to one of the few remaining artisans who weaves scarves and shawls from local sheep's wool. In your mind, they are imagining the designs. For example, ¿qué está aquí una flores? Sí. Roses and flowers here, no? You will see long knots and very short knots. And this is the original color, but the new color is not a good, is not going to get where the knots are. So when they take out the knots, you will get two colors. They mix, no? The knots and ash. And because of the ash, the colors don't come out when you wash the shawl. Like look, at that, look at that place. These are insects from the cactus. We call them cochinilla. They are insects actually, no? From the cactus. And they get colors from that. Look at that. Okay. Ah. No, no, it gets better. With lime. Ponemos un poco de limón. Y sacamos un tomate, no? Cambiando el color, según cómo se va moviendo, le va dando más el color. After the wool is dyed and dried, the knots are removed, revealing the two-tone color, and the raw material is taken to the loom, where it's crafted into shawls, scarves, and carpets. Y así se va haciendo todo el proceso hasta llegar. ¿Cuánto tiempo fue? Eh, eh, según el diseño, no. Este diseño se demora tres días para hacer. Hay, dis hay diseños que demoramos ocho días hasta dos meses, según uh -huh. el diseño que vamos a hacer. After the fringes are finished off with an intricate design of knots, the products are taken to a small store, and that's where we ended our day tour happily digging through the piles of shawls, scarves, and rugs.